Excellent! Hey everyone and welcome to Paul's Hardware. This is my monthly builds video for February 2016. Uh, the way this works is that each month I create a couple builds. These are parts lists. They're based on your votes and your feedback. Uh, and if you are looking for an actual build, this video does not have it. But I did build that computer behind me just yesterday and I do have a video coming on that. That was one of my builds for January. Um, now we're doing February build, so if you want to see that uh, build behind me, the G3258 build that uh, costs about $400, uh, stay tuned for that. should be up on Saturday, I believe. This month, based on your feedback, I'm going to be building two systems, uh, and they're based on this straw poll that I did from last month, which is what uh, PC builds you want to see for February. We had four options there, and I, I did something tricky here. I'm actually going to do all four of these options, but I like combined them together. So uh, we have a PC streaming and gaming system, as option number one says, but I combined that with the Farewell to AMD AM3 Plus system with an 8350 because there are some brand new 8350, 8350 boards out, and I'm going to use one of those new ones from Asus. Uh, I also have the budget Skylake with LGA 1151 Pentium CPU, uh, and that one I combined with a silently passive, silent passively cooled HTPC. So I have a budget Skylake silent passively cooled HTPC, and that one costs about six hundred dollars. Uh, just a few notes before I dive into the parts list here. Uh, one is that the costs I'm going to be talking about today are just for the system itself. That doesn't include monitor or peripherals or like an operating system unless I say otherwise. Also I'm going to be using PC Part Picker uh, because I find that it's an easy place to go and shop and choose parts for a computer. They have compatib compatibility filters and all that good stuff and links to these builds are down in the description below. Uh, also there will be a straw poll link down in the description where you can vote for the March builds for next month. So uh, if you guys want to check in the link in the description there's a straw poll down there for uh, voting for March 2016 and I have five different options on there. Uh, a $1,500 reasonably epic gaming system so like epic but you know it's $1,500 it's not like four grand. $300 gaming PC like a $300 not not just like a bare bones thing but actually can you game on it maybe that could be curious HTPC with a cable card for non cord cutters because I have a cable card system right now an ultra wide gaming build with a monitor similar to an ultra wide monitor like the one I have back behind me here uh, and then the smallest x86 computer you can build which I don't know that one sounds interesting too alright guys let's move straight into the builds themselves we're gonna start off with the AMD one uh, so this is again a gaming and streaming system. So if you're going to be gaming and streaming on the same system, well you need gaming chops of course, but the streaming part can add a fair amount of overhead when it comes to the CPU, depending on how you're streaming and encoding and all that kind of stuff. But typically uh, CPU, in, uh, having more CPU cores for example, like the FX8350 has, uh, since it's an 8 core, will help out with that. Now the FX8350, depending on the game and the settings and all that good stuff, not going to get you quite as good gaming performance, especially in the high-end games like AAA titles as say the newest Intel processors, but the fact that it is actually an 8 core processor means that in certain tasks that use more of the cores, it can actually outperform them. Um, I'm not going to go into any specifics right now, but let's just uh, say that hey for a uh, hundred and fifty to hundred and seventy dollars depending where you buy it What are we we're seeing here? 165 is the lowest price on uh, uh, PC part picker right now uh, But you can get this and it's eight, 8 core and you can overclock it and all that good stuff, too um, For a cooler I went with the Enermax. This is one I've used several times before um, It is 45 at Newegg, but uh, on the you can use a 15% off promo code uh, nice thing is PC Part Picker will often put those in there. So the promo code's in there and you can get it for like eight to ten dollars more than you would pay for like a Hyper 212. And I think it happens to look a lot nicer since it's all black and that kind of stuff. It's a good, good cooler too, so give you a little bit of overclocking headroom. And way better than the stock AMD cooler. Um, Okay, next up is the motherboard, and this one I had to punch in manually because it's not currently listed on PC Part Picker because this is a brand new motherboard. A brand new AM3 Plus motherboard. I didn't think we were going to see any more of these since AM4 is still like it's supposed to be coming I don't know soon a few months maybe um, but uh, all the motherboard manufacturers have kind of done this last like little slew of AM3 Plus uh, motherboards and they have some cool features um, for one I mean they look kind of fancier and this one has like the aura lighting effects and all that good stuff um, but I think one of the nice features on this one which hopefully I can get a good picture of some here, somewhere here. No, maybe not. Let's just do this. Uh, look, look down there at the bottom. That is a, ah, that's an M.2 slot. 
Yeah, on the bottom right there. This one's also got NVMe support, so faster um, support for faster drives and all that kind of stuff. Other than that, just, uh, you know, it's very gamery, of course, but um, it's a pretty nice board all, all around. And uh, it's a 970 chipset, um, but AMD has uh, released some of the restrictions on that. So you can still even do, like, Crossfire and SLI support if you're talking about two-card configurations. So that's pretty nice. For memory, I just went with a... Um, Team Dark 16 gig 2 by 8, 8 gig kit. I wanted 16 gigs for this because uh, you want a little bit more than that if you're talking like you know streaming and gaming at the same time. 8 gigs I think is kind of the minimum for gaming, and I'm actually leaning towards recommending 16 these days. But 16 should be fine, uh, and it's 1600 speed. And uh, whenever I'm looking for memory, I just I use the the drill down thing on PC Part Picker, and I just find like the cheapest memory that matches the the capacity and speed that I want, and then I just find something that hopefully looks decent. These have kind of silly heat spreaders on them. I don't know, they're not that bad at the top, but, um, you know, it'll work. Uh, for an SSD, once again, we've gone with the ADATA Premier SB550 240 gig SSD, because I feel like a 240 gig SSD is really nice uh, price point right now for the capacity you get in the speed. And I've used this several times, and that is because whenever I'm shopping for an SSD on PC Part Picker, I tend to go in here and I use these filters. So I want to show you, I want to do a little bit more focus on choosing the parts this time around and sort of how I do it because sometimes I just say here's the parts I picked but when I'm choosing a part like an SSD I'm like alright I want a 240 gig SSD so I use these little capacity sliders over here to narrow it down to between 220 and 300 definitely check the SSD checkbox right there then you can uh, narrow it down to other things by like interface and form factor and all that stuff but all I really care about is I want a 240, 256 gig SSD and how cheap can I get one $60 is the answer right now which is a good price in my opinion for a 240 gig. And then uh, of these that are all 60 bucks right now, uh, the A8 is just one that I've worked with before and I know it's pretty solid. PNY, you know, is fine as well. You got a Team One, uh, you got Silicon Power, I guess. And then if you go more expensive, you know, obviously there's other options. But you know what? For our money, uh, chances are we're not going to see a huge difference going with the slightly better SATA uh, Rev, Rev 3 6 gigabit per second SSDs. I wanted to drop some uh, uh, mass storage in there too, so we got a Hitachi 2 terabyte hard drive, um, 60 bucks, pretty good hard drive, should be pretty reliable for you, and gets you lots of mass storage. Uh, for a video card, I just decided on a GTX 970, and I didn't want to go into the whole like which video card to choose and all the team red and team green, mo green options. Swap this out for something else if you don't like the 970. I just think uh, this one in particular is a pretty good price point. It's about 310 on Amazon uh, for EVGAs, and this is the super clock version. I have used this one specifically. Um, it's got a nice, you know, it's got a pretty decent little little cooling solution on it. it. Stays really quiet. It's got the zero RPM fan mode and all that good stuff. And uh, I've done a well. I haven't done a lot of streaming with AMD cards, so I can't really speak to the experience there. But my experience streaming with NVIDIA cards has been pretty uh, straightforward and, and haven't had too much difficulty with it. All right, rounding things out, we of course need a case, so I went with the Corsair Graphite series. Uh, this is just a fairly budget case. This is a 230T, uh, and it's black, and it gets the job done. That's, that's really all we're looking for here. It's just a standard ATX case. Uh, it's got a couple fans included. You can fit all your hardware in it, you know. There's other options too, of course, but uh, hey, that's one I chose. Finally, for power supply, we got the EVGA uh, 80 plus bronze rated 600 watts, uh, 600B, and um, this is just a very solid and inexpensive power supply. In fact, there's a $15 mail-in rebate card here. Um, in case you guys are wondering, when I show you guys the lists on PC Part Picker, I usually don't show. Um, I, I usually don't show mail-in rebates. I turn that off. But you can get this even cheaper if you include those, and uh, this one in particular is one where you got a $15. So you can get this for $35 bucks if you include that mail-in rebate. Not too bad. Um, finally, since this is a streaming system, I figured you should be able to stream with it, like, you know, out of the box, more or less. So I included a, a webcam. This is a C920, just old standard from Logitech. It's been around for a while. It shoots 1080. Uh, I use it for time lapses and a bunch of other stuff. You can get it as cheap as about 60. I've seen it for 50 bucks, but $63 is how much Amazon has it for right now. The only thing I think besides all this stuff that you might want to also include for a streaming and gaming system would be, well, you got to have sound and something to talk to because you want to talk to the people. Um, the webcam does have a built-in mic, but it's awful. I wouldn't recommend that. So uh, the only other thing I would say maybe consider throwing in here would be something like a headset. So like, uh, and for that, I'd maybe recommend a Kingston, uh, the Cloud, the HyperX Cloud uh, Core is a very good headset with actually good audio, and, and uh, it's only about 60 to $70. 
Anyway, so that is uh, first build. And guys, of course, as always, let me know in the comments what you think about it. $1,000 gaming and streaming. I know it's an AMD 8350. Um, oh, but the one thing I did want to point out for anyone who's looking at this and, tell, and shaking their fist and saying, Paul, why did you do that? I will say that before I, I chose to do what I did based on the straw polls from last month, I did seriously, seriously consider uh, the Xeon uh, 1230. Oh, crap. I'm going to forget what that is. Hold on. I wrote it in my notes earlier, but now, now it's gone. Uh, the E3 1231V3. That one costs about $250 out of the box, but it's basically like a 4790 uh, or 4790K without the iGPU, but it does have hyper-threading, so you do get um, eight threads, which is nice, again, for uh, for live streaming. Okay, so there's that build, and uh, I hope you guys like it. Let's move on to the next one. What is the next one? Next one is the passively cooled HTPC. This one was fun, because I had to find, I wanted there to be no fans, zero fans in this build, um, and everything passively cooled. The loudest thing in the system will be you standing next to it. That's, that's my assumption. Anyway, uh, so here it is. It's about $600 total. And granted, that is a little a little more expensive, but um, it's weird here when I'm doing the passively cooled thing. The most premium components, the stuff that cost the most in here, were weird things like the power supply or uh, I guess the SSD maybe or the motherboard. But um, Anyway, so let's start off from the, the beginning, which is it's a Skylake system. So it's LGA 1151 socket motherboard is what we're going to need. And I went with the cheapest version, which is the Pentium G4400. Um, this one has lower. It's got the the uh, iGPU is the Intel 510. Um, if you are willing to pay 20 to $30 more for the G4500 or the G4520, I'm sorry if I'm messing up any of these, these names, um, then you can get yourself... Uh, a little bit more performance on the graphics side. As it is though, I think you could overclock this right now with the BCLK overclocking like I showed you guys last week in my video. Um, you should be able to overclock this a little bit if you wanted to, but who knows if you will do that since it's gonna be passively cooled. Anyway though, it's dual core. It's a 65 watt TDP, so, uh, which is a little bit lower than, than the higher end chips. And uh, I think it'd be pretty snappy as long as you don't really need the, the quad core performance. For a cooler, since we're going for passively cooled, I went with this Zalman FX70. Funny thing here is the FX70 costs $15 less than the uh, than that CPU. But again, there's a $20 mail-in rebate card, so you can get this down to $30 bucks if you're willing to do that M MIR. Um, this has a unique looking fin array because it's supposed to be passively cooled. You do have the option to strap fans to this if you want to, but I was reading through the reviews and they're all pretty positive about its performance. Um, even people who are using it to cool, like I think one guy had it with a A10-7850K, which is an AMD APU with a GPU built in that's um, going to generate a lot more. That's a 95 watt TDP part and he said it was still working pretty good. So anyway, fanless cooler. Here's a motherboard, the GA-Z170MD3H. There's several motherboards uh, that would fit this build that are in the sub $100 range. I went with this motherboard mainly because it's Z170, and I wanted to keep that option open for the BCLK overclocking, even though Intel might turn it off, which would suck. Anyway, though, this is a pretty full-featured motherboard. Um, it's got, your, again, pretty much everything you would need. It doesn't have those fancier higher-end features. I don't think it's got, like, an M.2 on it or anything like that, unless it's tucked away in the back. No, no. No, I'm about to. Uh, but who cares? It's going to get the job done, and it's got uh, your video outs that you would need to connect to an HTPC, which is mainly going to be an HDMI port. Sweet. Uh, also got some PS2 and some backwards compatibility. Doesn't look too bad either. Uh, Micro ATX. Um, here is some memory. G-Skill RipJaws 5 series. This is actually some very nice memory from G-Skill. That's a 2400 speed, too, which is a little bit faster than the default uh, for DDR4. 3899. Uh, it's cool you can get an 8 gig kit of DDR4 for uh, in the $40-ish range, and this is even a couple bucks cheaper. So, hey, cool. I went with that. Uh, for an SSD, I went with the Mushkin Eco 2. This is a 512 gig SSD. Um, again, not the fastest of the SATA 3 SSDs that are out there, but 120 bucks for 512 gigs. I was going to go with two drives for this, but then I was like, you know what, 512 for an HTPC, it's going to give you a pre pretty decent amount of space for, like, you know, recorded media and that kind of stuff. I did not include a hard drive in here um, because I wanted, what I really wanted to do was go with more, uh, like, more SSD storage, but I figured let's keep with the 512, which is totally fine out of the gate, and then give you guys the option to maybe uh, upgrade or add more drives in the future. But no mechanical drives. 
They will make noise. Okay, uh, Cooler Master N200 is the case I went with, and as you can see here, once again, there's a $10 mail-in rebate uh, if you want to go that route. So you can get this as cheap as $40 if you're in the U.S. right now. Uh, I went with this one because uh, fairly inexpensive. Uh, it's black, and it will blend in pretty well uh, in a, in a HTPC environment. Um, there are HTPC cases that are, you know, the, they're horizontal instead of vertical, and they're made a little bit more to fit into a home theater type look. Um, but I, those are more expensive, generally speaking. And what I really liked about this one, which you can tell probably from this sticker, or from this picture, is that it's got grilling across the entire front of it. So plenty of airflow for passive cooling. It's also got a vent on the top, so um, some of that heat can just go out the top. But since I would be removing both of the fans in this case and keeping everything passively cooled, I wanted there to be lots of airflow. And then beyond that, it's micro ATX painted interior. It's a cooler master. It's good quality, so uh, I thought that was a good choice for there. Here's the power supply. Uh, I was going to go with the Enermax Digifan list, but that apparently has disappeared. I can't find it anywhere for less than like $250. So I went with the Seasonic model, which is a, a, a nice one. I hadn't seen it before. 80 plus platinum certified, and um, if, if that makes you a little bit queasy due to the price, consider that HTPCs are often on 24-7. So I feel like having a highly rated power supply for efficiency would be a good choice there. My HTPC out in the living room was on an 80 plus bronze power supply for quite a while, and I only just moved it to an 80 plus gold, and I noticed a, a little a little bit of savings in the uh, on the power bill for that. Anyway, it's fully modular, and it's uh, it's a nice. I actually really like this power supply. 460 watts means it's got more than enough power, and if you guys couldn't already tell, I was trying to maintain an upgrade path with this build because I like all of my builds to have upgrade paths so obviously I could have gone with micro ATX and super or mini ITX and super small and all that kind of stuff but I wanted there to be the possibility to drop a graphics card in there and make it a gaming system and for an HTPC graphics card plus uh, like a cable or a TV tuner card like a what I have is an, a Seton Infinity TV didn't include that for this build but it's there and available if you wanted to upgrade to that in the future Okay, finishing out, I wanted a couple accessories because I feel like that's kind of what makes the HTPC what it is. So we got a Vision Tech candy board. Uh, it's a wireless Bluetooth mini QWERTY keyboard, um, which even has a little mouse trackpad on it and some right and left clicks and all that good stuff. Uh, Kyle has one of these, and I like it. I have a more full-size one that I use, but uh, yeah, candy board and what is this? 32 bucks, not bad at all. And then, of course, you're going to want a remote for an HTPC. So I just want this little, this little $20 rose wheel. Windows 7 certified Media Center Edition uh, infrared remote controller. Works with Windows 8 uh, Media Center Edition. It's got the buttons you'd want and stuff. And uh, that should allow you to remotely control your completely silenced, passively cooled HTPC from your couch. Pretty sweet. Anyway, though, guys, that is all for this video. I would like to say a huge thank you to any of you guys who have jumped into chat and said hello. Uh, if you're watching this on my channel, don't forget to hit the like button. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more stuff like this. I'll be doing these at the beginning of every month. And again, like I said, I don't always just go over parts. I actually build the system sometimes, so stay tuned for later this week when I've got that uh, uh, system, that $400 build that I made for my parents. And uh, that's all ready to go. It's in post-production right now. Thanks again for watching, though, guys, and we'll see you next time.